This week we're going to start mixing the drums that we recorded last week and we're going to start with a Poltec EQP1A as well as the MEQ5. Okay, let's just jump right in and uh, we're in the uh, uh, timeline window right now. Now we're going to jump over to the mixer window and right here in this column it's called inserts. This is where we're going to insert the uh, Poltec EQP1A. So we just hit the plus sign. I've already selected them all down here, grouped them. So when I hit the plus sign, it will put the Poltec on each one of the tracks. Makes it pretty convenient. And then it brings up this window and then you just look for the Poltec. And this one right here has both the EQP 1A as well as the MEQ 5. And I'll briefly go over uh, what goes with what. Uh, start with the EQ uh, P1A. These three uh, work together. This is your boost, this is your cut or attenuate. And it's not one to one. Uh, I just learned this. Um, so, in other words, one does not equal one dB of boost to the same thing through 10 uh, because I think it actually equals 13.5. Uh, dB of boost at 10 so it's not exactly one-to-one -one. and to make it even more interesting the attenuate I think uh, cuts it by 18 I believe I'm not positive of that um, so it's not one-to-one -one. just know that just kind of consider these steps or levels uh, just like I want to raise it you know four steps rather than dB just to kind of keep that in your, you know, just so you know exactly what you're working with here. Uh, this, so again, these three work together. So when you want to boost 30, uh, you know, 20 through 100 hertz, uh, it's right there. So there you go. And also, um, these aren't exactly like the sharpest uh, so it is going to affect some of the frequencies around it uh, one other thing uh, you would think that boosting and cutting the same frequency would cancel each other out but it actually ends up tightening up the low end so if you want to experiment with that uh, it's pretty amazing and which we'll do here in a second okay so the bandwidth actually affects this guy right here so here's your 3000 through 16000 uh, okay, and you usually leave it at eight. Uh, so the bandwidth will affect how sharp or how many, uh, or how broad you make that. So when you have it at broad, it's gonna, if you're at 8K, it's gonna affect the frequencies around it, you know, six, seven, and then, you know, nine, up 10, it, it makes it pretty wide. So, so this guy, this guy, and this guy work together. And so if you're boosting right here, again, it's not one-to-one, -one, and I forgot the, the actual amount, but it's certainly not 10, and I think it might even be 18 on this one rather than the 13.5 over here. So, Okay, so this one, this one, this one work together, and then the attenuation or cut uh, works with this guy over here. So you have your 5K through 20, and this one works with that so this this does not affect this this is what the these two work together all right and then up to the meq5 same type of thing these two work together uh, these two work together and these two work together this is your 200 through thousand and you're boosting and this is 200 through 7k and you're cutting and it's right here, uh, how much you want to cut. And then your 1.5K through 5K, you're boosting. So let's get started on the overheads. And it's really simple. I'm going to group these together. Grab both of them at the same time. And then I usually just boost it by about maybe two level steps or levels. I, this is brand new to me, by the way, with the uh, the steps and levels thing, because I actually thought up until a couple of days ago it actually was uh, 
2 dB, but I have been corrected. So I just boosted by 2, and let's listen to what that sounds like. So let's get the loop going. I guess I need to turn it on to actually have some things happen. So let's go extreme here. Crispy. But I don't want it that crispy because we have a long, a long road ahead of us. So there's going to be a lot of things that happen. So let's. Let's go with three for now. And that is literally all I do to the overheads. And then the bass drum. Let's solo it and see what we get here. Bass drum, I usually uh, like to get the click happening. Get it to where I'm pretty generous with that. And if it needs more low end, that's where I do the uh, boosting and cutting thing. Because it tightens it up. It gives it that low end, but it also tightens it up. So that's with, that's without. With and without. Okay, let's move on to the snare. So I give a lot of love to the snare. Uh, start with the uh, midsection, or mid-range, midsection. Mid-range, uh, we go with, I usually just bump it up about six or seven levels. Pretty generous with that. And then I go up to 700 and I dip it until it starts to sound a little bit more focused, which is about right there. I jump over to 2K and I raise it about, I don't want it to sound papery, but brighter would be nice. There we go. And then I go to 8K for that nice, wonderful crack. go that's what it sounds like with that sounds that's what it sounds like without all right and moving on to the toms I usually group these together and they are uh, ringing but I'm gonna take care of that uh, later because they it might actually be a good thing you never know so I'm gonna raise it just give it a little body at 200 and I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the snare and dip it down a little bit and then I'm gonna jump over to 4k and give it some brightness I think I'm going to give it some brightness. So for 8K for the attack. Let's listen to that with and without. That's without, and that is with. Let's listen to everything together.
Thank you very much for being here. Appreciate you watching. Hope you got something out of this one. Uh, next week, we're going to be going over uh, the bus section, and we're going to add one more EQ as well as uh, compression with the Fairchild 670. So it should be a fun one. All right, I will see you next Monday. Have a good one. Mm -hmm.